today and always. Oh, yeah, yeah. Wherever you are, let's get up and serve him. Come on. Let's do this. All that men would praise his name. Praise his name to the end of the earth. All that men would praise his name.
Well, take a moment and think about his goodness, who he's been in your life. And just sing your own song to him. He's been good to us. Even in this storm, he's been keeping us. Let's just sing this together. We sing holy. Holy. Our God is holy. Holy. And he's faithful. Yes, he is. Faithful. Even in the storm, he's faithful. Well, good morning. Hope you're having a wonderful weekend. Hope you've had some opportunities just to be together with your family or whomever on, on Saturday. And now as we are together here this morning to worship, I'm hoping that you are ready to receive from the Lord. We've been going through a series in the last little while that I've called Pillars. And I'm looking at different important things when it comes to our faith. We talked about God the Father awfully important we talked about Jesus last week today I want to I want to move on and I want to start by saying that a few years ago I had a, I had a mentor that came and spent time with me on a weekly basis and what he would do is he would ask probing questions and he would challenge me in my ministry and encourage me and, and help me through it this guy was a businessman and very successful businessman actually and he had a lot of good advice he had a lot of encouragement and, and once in a while, he gave me a good kick in the pants. Listen, we all need that, don't we? Well, you know, after a while of spending time with him, one day I remember him coming to me and saying, I have done, done all I can for you. Our time is up. And I'm like, what do you mean our time is up? I, I, I can't do this without you. Why are you leaving me like this and leaving me in the lurch? Ah, I'm not going to make it while it wasn't that uh, extreme but uh, it, it I felt in some ways that you know I, I'm a little bit abandoned here as I try to move forward on my own you know it may have not been that severe for myself but it certainly was for the disciples see here's the thing if you go back to John chapter 13 he uh, Jesus tells him he says all right boys he says I I've done what I can I spent my time with him obviously I'm paraphrasing I've done what I can I, I'm moving on you guys got to take it from here and I can just think these guys going yeah great Jesus thanks so much I mean like I, I, that's a fine how do you do well maybe they didn't say that that's not in the Greek anyways but they uh, they probably thinking man how are we gonna ever survive actually John chapter 16 verse 5 to 6 says now I am going to him who sent me yet none of you asked me where am I going because I said these things you are filled with grief in other words, these guys, they really didn't care that he was going up to heaven. That, but what they cared about is they felt abandoned and they were filled with grief. You ever felt like that? You ever felt like, like you have been abandoned, you're on your own, and you're trying to figure things out? Well, you're not alone, and we're going to talk about that here today. But Jesus gave them hope, hope that is very relevant to us today as well. He says in verse 7, he says, But I tell you the truth, it is for your good that I'm going away. Unless I go away, the counselor will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. In other words, Jesus is saying, listen, I can't be with you all the time, every single step, but I, I, I know who can, and that is the Holy Spirit. And we want to talk about the Holy Spirit here this morning and his involvement in our lives. Let, let's keep reading. John 16, 8 to 14 says this. When he comes, he will convict the world of guilt in regards to sin and righteousness and judgment. In regards to sin, because men do not believe in me. In regards to righteousness, because I'm going to the Father where you can see me no longer. And re in regards to judgment, because the prince of this world now stands condemned I have much to say to you more than you can bear but when he the Holy the Spirit of truth comes he will guide you into all truth he will not speak on his own he will speak only what he hears and he will tell you what is yet to come he will bring glory to me by taking from me what is mine and making it known to you let's let's pray together father I thank you for your word here this morning and I thank you, Lord, that you did send your spirit. And as we take time to look at his involvement in our lives, open up our hearts to receive from you. And Father, help us 
to take what we hear and to live it out for your glory in Jesus name amen so so why did he send the spirit or what is the spirit all about well first of all one of his things the spirit does is that he convicts he convicts in regards to sin again going back to the scripture it says when he comes he will convict the world of guilt in regard to sin convict what does that mean it means to bring to light to expose to refute to convict or convince it, it could be translated pronounce the verdict have you ever been there? Have you ever been in a place where you're burning deep down inside because you know that you've done something wrong that you need to make right and, and you can't even sleep properly? I was at a, uh, a set free retreat a number of weeks ago and, and uh, what they did is they got us to a place where we were examining ourselves and looking if there are things in our lives maybe that we have buried that we got to bring to the surface and confess things that aren't good things that we got to make right with the Lord now listen I, I, it was not an easy thing to do there are some stuff that I'm thinking like wow I get Yes, I probably didn't deal with this thing and we had to deal with it together and it was great it was really it was such a relief and and a release but can I encourage you if you have stuff in your life you know is not right don't bury it if the Holy Spirit is bringing it to your mind then you got you gotta you, you gotta confess it and maybe a good way to do that is to talk to someone about it someone that you can trust James says in James chapter 5 verse 16 therefore confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed the prayer of the righteous man is powerful and effective see he convicts not to condemn us not to to push us down and and to make us feel bad but he put he convicts us to bring us to the place of repentance and he does that to unbelievers as well he he uh, convicts the world verse 9 says in regards to sin because men do not believe in me back in way back in 1974 Billy Graham who was a young man at that time was playing in a golf tournament with President Gerald Ford and another player and they were out there playing golf and when everything was over uh, one of the pros went to this other individual and said hey what was it like playing golf with the president and Billy Graham my land the and the pro he was disgusted and he said I don't need Billy Graham stuffing religion down my throat and then he took off and he and he went to the practice tees and and his friend followed him and and after the the golfer had had slammed a few balls and all that he said what was Billy that rough on you out there and the pro sighed and he said this he says no he didn't even mention religion see Billy Graham at this tournament he said nothing about God he said nothing about Jesus he said nothing about religion yet this guy was seriously convicted why why because well first of all it's Billy Graham let's just be honest but realistically it's because the Holy Spirit it wasn't about Billy Graham it was about the Holy Spirit that convicted this guy and says hey man you got to get things right here he, the Holy Spirit has come to convict the guilty he 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 has come in regards to righteousness as well uh, it, it says here uh, in this verse it says he has come to to convict the world when it comes to righteousness what is righteousness righteousness is the quality of being right in the eyes of God including character or nature conscience that's attitude conduct that's action and command which means word now listen I don't know about you but I, I want my character or my actions and my words and who I am or what I do I want it to be upright I want to be righteous not necessarily before you but before God ultimately that's the most important 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 person that we need to be upright before but the truth is my righteousness whatever I do it just doesn't cut it. it I can't do enough to be on a right standing before God I will always fall short because my measuring rod is way too small God's measuring rod is immense and when he looks at righteousness he doesn't look at the good things that I can do he looks at what Jesus has done for me and it's 
Jesus' righteousness that needs to be in our life. So how does he do this? It says, in regards to righteousness, because I'm going to the Father where you can see me no longer. It's interesting. The Jews at the time, they accused Jesus of being all sorts of stuff. They accused him of being an imposter. It, it, maybe some sort of magician that is going out to deceive people. They dis accused him of destroying the law. Like he's not keeping the rules like we are supposed to be keeping them. They, they accused him of seducing the people. They even accused him of being demon possessed. I mean, stop and consider that God being demon possessed. But they they looked at him and they had a lot of, a lot of hate for this for this wonderful man of God. And Jesus is saying, look, I'm going to prove to you someday when it comes to righteousness, you will see that I indeed am the righteous one of God. He says, because here's the thing, I'm going to be ascending up to my father. You're not going to see me any longer on this planet, but someday you're going to see me up there when you face me face to face and you're going to realize how incredibly wrong you were. And by that time, it will be incredibly late. See, he convicts. He convicts in, in, in the sense of guilt. He convicts in the sense of righteousness, being in the right stand before God. He convicts in regards to judgment. It says when he comes, he will convict the world of judgment. What's judgment? Judgment is the process of investigation, the act of distinguishing and separating and then passing judgment upon a person or thing. Have you ever been a little careless on the road? Okay, let's be honest, we all have. So you're driving down the road, kind of you're listening to your favorite song on the radio or whatever, and you're, you're driving down completely oblivious to what's going on around you. And you see these pretty red and blue lights behind you. And you realize it's not Christmas time, if you understand what I'm saying. And you get pulled over. Now, I, it's happened to me a few times, so I speak from experience. You, you've broken the law and there are consequences. See, that's judgment. It's, it's uh, the fact that when we do something wrong, there is consequences. The Holy Spirit judges us not to condemn, let's say it again, but to get us back on track. Satan judges to condemn. Verse 11 here says, the, and in regard to judgment, because the prince of this world now stands condemned. He who wants to condemn you and us is going to and is condemned under the presence of the Holy Spirit. The enemy, he wants to bring you down. Christ, through the Holy Spirit, wants to convict us, to bring us back on track, to show us the things that we've done wrong, and to get us back to a place that we need to be. The Holy Spirit convicts. Secondly, the Holy Spirit indwells. That is, he comes into our lives when we ask him to. He indwells, first of all, to comfort. Verse 12 says, I have much more to say to you, more than you can bear. See, here's the thing. Jesus was always careful of how much he gave to his disciples, giving them the right information and the right amount at the right time. He didn't want to overwhelm them, but he wanted to comfort them. What a beautiful example of the Holy Spirit. Hey, let's go back a few chapters. Let's go back to John chapter 14, verse 26. It says this, but the counselor, another version says the comforter, the Holy Spirit who the Father will send in my name will teach you all things and will remind you of everything I have said to you. I love that word comforter or counselor. The word in the original language is parakletos. That word parakletos means one that comes be, uh, beside you, call beside or to another person to aid them, to help them through. Listen, through the years, I've had a lot of people that I had to uh, I, I had to give them a big hug and try to encourage them because of a loss of a loved one, because of a loss of a job, because of a situation that they were going through. And I had to be there, and I'm sure you did as well, to be there to support that individual. Uh, isn't it true that when we see somebody that's hurting, if we don't know what else to do, we just come alongside them and give them a hug. That's a pericolitos. That's someone that comes along side to help and to encourage during a very difficult time. Can, can I ask you something? 
when you go through a difficult time or, or you're, you're discouraged or, or whatever it is and you're sitting there alone, do you ever ask the Holy Spirit for a hug? I mean, that may seem like, really, Wes? Yeah, really. Ask, see, see, because that's what the Holy Spirit does. He comes alongside to comfort, to encourage, to help us to go, uh, to move on. Jesus, let's go back to John chapter 14, verse 27. It's Jesus said, peace I leave with you. My peace I give you. I do not give you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. Jesus came to give us peace. When he was on this planet, he gave that to his disciples. And he uses the Holy Spirit today to speak peace into our life, to bring us to a place of, hey, you can make this. That's what the Holy Spirit wants to do for you. And can I encourage you, allow him to bring you comfort. He, he indwells to comfort. He indwells, secondly, to guide. Back to John 16, verse 13, it says, But when he, the Spirit of truth, comes, he will guide you into all truth. Listen, there's a lot of stuff out there that tries to bring deception and tries to get us off track. You know, back in 2021, it, it was a year of scams. There was a, a number of things that people did to try to get your coin. Now, think about it. You probably got the call, the same as I got, from CRA calling you up and saying, you owe money, and if you don't pay, like right now, you will be arrested. Let me be clear about something. CRA will not call you and will, will not say you will be arrested if you don't follow through. They'll send a letter to you or something if you owe money. Do not be deceived. But yeah, it's interesting because I had a person come into my office um, a while back actually and said they got a call from CRA saying that they needed to pay thousands of dollars. Now they were fairly new in the country and what the, what the caller said is that if you don't pay you will be deported. And that was their greatest fear, that they would be deported back to the country they came from. So they paid the thousands of dollars. They got another call saying, you owe more money. And they came to me and said, I don't know what to do. They, or they're demanding more money and I don't have it. I'm like, oh, Lord, oh, oh, you've been scammed. Please do not pay. Please report this to the police and uh, uh, make sure you don't go there because the people will not do this. But let's get back to 2021. It was a year of scams, not just CRA. There were, there's, let me say three of the biggest scams that happened back last year. There was a cryptocurrency scam. What this was, was people were asked to invest in, in a fake cryptocurrency account. And, and people lost millions. Actually, Canadians lost $70.2 million to this cryptocurrency scam. There was a romance scam. This is where criminals would call somebody up using social media or dating sites or whatever and they would have this virtual relationship with this person they looked really good online and the person was looking for a, a spouse or a friend or whatever and then what they do after they get to know this individual they would ask for some money you know I, I've got this operation coming up or whatever Canadians lost more than 42.2 million dollars to these romance dating scams Please, please be careful when it comes to that. The third one I want to mention was what was called spear phishing scam. Now this isn't phishing, this is phishing. And in other words, what happens is a person gets an email from apparently from a trustworthy source, but instead it leads to, to the unknowing recipient going to a website and, and giving money to this website or actually downloading malware and stuff into the computer that actually absolutely messes up their life. Canadians, 2021, lost $38 million to this scam. Can I make it very clear? Banks and reputable companies will not send you an email to get private information or to get you to pay something without you getting a letter or coming to the bank. Please do be very careful. Now, why do I tell you all this? Because there is a lot of deception out there that we have to guard against. The Holy Spirit has been given to us not necessarily to help us in cryptocurrencies, but he has given to us to help us to know truth 
and to no lies. And he indwells us to keep us from deception. Hey, listen, I've used this verse many, many times, found in Isaiah chapter 30, verse 21. I know it's it was written to the Jewish people, but it's applicable and can be very applicable to us here today. It says, whether you turn to the right or to the left, your ears will hear a voice behind you saying, this is the way, walk in it. You know what we need to pray for is we need to pray, God, would you give us your Holy Spirit so we would know truth, that we would know which way to walk, that we would know what to do, who to avoid, who to spend time with. I can tell you that if you pray that prayer and ask God to fill you with your Holy, his Holy Spirit, that when things like this come up, you're going to get a check in your spirit. You're going to go, whoa, hang on a second. Something doesn't feel right. If it doesn't feel right, it probably isn't. Check it out, first of all. Let the Holy Spirit guide. He convicts, he indwells, lastly, he empowers. It's it, Jesus says he will not speak on his own. He will speak only what he hears. The Holy Spirit will continue to communicate and, and build upon the message of Jesus. A message of repentance, a message of hope, both now and for eternity, and the message of the kingdom of God that Jesus preached. The fact that God's rule it starts in our hearts here today, and it continues on as we continue to, to uh, commit ourselves to Jesus. The Holy Spirit doesn't give us a, a, a message that will be def different from what Jesus said, but he will build upon us and he will empower us not just to receive the message, but to walk it out, to walk as children of the kingdom. I love Acts chapter 1 verse 8. It says, you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. What, what does that mean? You will be my witnesses. Let's get back to John chapter 16 verse 14 where Jesus says, he will bring glory to me by taking from what is mine and making it known to you. In other words, the Holy Spirit will give us the message, that the power to live out that message of Jesus and bring attention to Jesus. Listen, it's all about Jesus. It's all about Jesus. It's all about getting our focus on Jesus and encouraging others to come to Jesus as well. He gives us power to live in a way that honors Jesus. And listen, can I just say, you have potential of doing great things for Jesus. But see, you know what? This is, this, is a, this is a flashlight. It's a pretty flashlight. This is you. Okay, maybe you look a little bit better than this. But, but just imagine, this is you. See, you have great potential. Like this flashlight has great potential to guide somebody through the dark and help somebody find their way. But it's, it's nothing more than a paperweight. Not saying that you're a paperweight, but it's nothing more than a paperweight if it's not turned on. If the light is, if the power source is not there. And in the same way, we, we can do certain things, but we truly can be victorious. We truly can be witnesses. We truly can make a difference when we have the power of the Holy Spirit filling our lives. Can I encourage you? Be filled with the Holy Spirit. Paul says in Ephesians chapter 5, verse 18, he says, Do not get drunk on wine, which leads to debauchery. Instead, be filled with the Spirit. See, there's a lot of people, even Christians, that are, they pursue the drink and they get drunk and they, and that brings them, I don't know what it brings them really, but they, but they get so f focused on that instead of being focused as believers as believers of being empowered by the Spirit of God so that we can be light, so that we can be salt, so that we can make a difference and we can bring attention to Jesus. Listen, you can make it when you have the Holy Spirit in your lives. Can I ask you something? Are you finding it difficult to live out a Christian life? You need to be filled with the Spirit. Are you finding it hard and difficult to say no to sin and yes to God? You need to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Are you finding it hard to tell people about Jesus? To be light in a dark world. You need to be filled with the Holy Spirit. You need the Holy Spirit. And you know, I, I want to encourage you. It, 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 
it comes to this. It comes to this point in our lives where we need to understand that Christ has forgiven us of our sins, as we talked about last week, that at that place, God gave us the Holy Spirit, but we have to allow him to take control of our lives. I've, I've used this illustration many times. I, I've used the illustration of when we become a believer, we give our lives to the Lord and we invite him into our life. It's like driving a car. We invite him into the passenger seat of our lives and the Holy Spirit comes in and he sits down beside us and he gives us encouragement and direction and we steer in certain areas. But when we ask him to fill us, when we ask him to, to absolutely overcome us with his presence and with his power and we receive this power of the Holy Spirit as it says in Acts chapter 1 verse 8. And by the way, this has got to be an ongoing thing. Romans, uh, Ephesians 5, 18. It, it says be filled means a continuous thing. When we say, Holy Spirit, would you fill me? Holy Spirit, would you guide me? Holy Spirit, would you empower me? When we do that, we simply step away from the driver's seat and we allow him to take his rightful place and steer our lives. He becomes the driver. We sit in the passenger seat. You need the Holy Spirit in the driver's seat of your life. I don't know where you're at today. I don't know if you have been filled with the Holy Spirit, if you've asked him to fill you up. But I can tell you this, God wants to fill you more than you want to be filled. It starts by you understanding who the Holy Spirit is, as we talked about here today. And we, it comes to the point where we have to understand that He loves us and He wants to guide us. And it, then we have to surrender to Him. We have to ask Him into our lives. We need to ask Him into that place of authority in our lives. And we need to ask Him to fill us. I'm going to pray a prayer. I don't know where you're at. And if you have received the Holy Spirit, fantastic. If you have been empowered by the Spirit to do things for the Lord, fantastic. But we need it on a constant basis. If you, if you haven't received the Spirit of God and you still, you, you want this here today, can, can you pray this prayer after me? Dear Holy Spirit, I thank you that you've been sent by Jesus, that Christ came and died and rose again and sent you as our guide, as our comforter, as our strength. I invite you into my life. I ask you to take the driver's seat of my life, to guide me in the way you want to guide me, to empower me with your power to fill me with your presence, to help me to live and to walk and to do things in a way that brings attention to Jesus. So I surrender myself to you today. Holy Spirit, would you please come in? Holy Spirit, would you please fill me? Holy Spirit, would you please take your rightful place in my life? I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I remember the day that I received the, the infilling of the Holy Spirit. And I had my cousin was praying for me at that time. And after she prayed a very simple prayer like this, she said, Wes, just begin to worship him and begin to thank him and to begin to honor him. And, and don't feel don't feel weird about what, what you're saying. Just begin to do so. And I began to thank Jesus and praise him and began to worship. And be, he began to fill my mouth with words. And I began to speak out in other tongues. And God wants to do that for you. He wants to give you that as well. So as we close today, can I encourage you to begin just to worship God. And as you are worshiping God in wherever you are at, as you are focusing on Him, just worship Him and let Him, let Him fill your mouth with praise and adoration. And He, He wants to give you that language that honors Him. Let Him do that. Let Him fill you today. And listen, can I encourage you? After today, please let me know. Let me know how God has worked in your heart, how the Holy Spirit has guided you, what He's done for you. Can I encourage you? Give me a call. Send me an email. I would love to hear from you. 
God bless you. Allow the Spirit to do a work right now. I'm just going to step away and allow Him to do His part as we worship. I just lift your worship. He's our king. He reigns forever. He has the world in his hands. And God, we place our trust in you. We declare that you are holy, Lord. 